Hey, Dean, welcome. Hello. All right, everybody, welcome to the content routing work group number 16. Uh, we're like well on our way to 27. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Um, so uh, I dropped a link to the notes in our chat. I'll drop it again because I think I did that before I hit record, um, just so it catches the notes. And then um, we can just review that at the top of this uh, Notion page, there's a number of links relative to kind of open ongoing items uh, that are in discussion, but also some more general content routing kind of context documents, discussions that have happened in the past, but are still relevant to uh, a lot of the uh, like ongoing work that's being done presently. Um, we usually start this meeting every time with a quick update from the teams that participate because we've got a really good um, breadth of kind of visibility into what's going on around the network here on these teams. I'll start with an update from the IPNI team. And then if the IPFS folks in Probe Lab would like to jump in, we'd love to hear about y'all. So on the IPNI side of the house, um, the foundation DB experimentation is ongoing, but we've hit some pretty um, pretty hard obstacles. Uh, the backing database for foundation DB has a memory leak that I think once we hit a certain amount of scale, potentially, Mossy, correct me if I'm wrong, there may have been other uh, factors that contributed to this, but essentially the important point to take away is uh, we had a very painful memory leak. We think we've got uh, a replacement backing database that would uh, potentially be a good candidate that uh, resolves this issue. However, uh, the real question for us is whether or not we have the resources to continue this level of experimentation right now. And so um, we've got a lot of internal considering to do regarding uh, our path forward. But for the time being, the important takeaway from the group is uh, Foundation DB will not be uh, live in production anytime soon for IPNI. We're continuing with the rock solid, continuing to service Pebble DB, which is uh, rocking along heartily right now. Uh, hence the reason why probably nobody even noticed that we're having these problems because uh, we're serving such uh, uh, redundant infrastructure right now. Uh, and um, on top of that, uh, speaking of redundant infrastructure, we've been kind of undergoing a uh, pruning exercise with our infrastructure over the course of the last three weeks that I got to heartily give some applause to both Mossy and uh, Andrew Gillis for uh, really bringing down the scope of infrastructure costs on IPNI consistently week over week, three weeks running. Um, big numbers, and uh, we've done so without reducing any of our reliability or redundancy as well, uh, I think. Um, from the looks of things, uh, our performance has uh, stayed perfectly the same, and so uh, there's a lot to be applauded there. Additionally, uh, there's something worth checking out, which is uh, Andrew updated our CLI and included some really helpful distance commands um, that I think folks in this group might be a little interested in. Uh, I'm uh, talking to him about if we can show them off in one of our demo days that's coming up. Um, but folks here might be interested. Uh, if he doesn't want to show them off in the demo day, I might run them. Uh, but either way, I'll share a link to the folks in this group when it happens. Basically, you can check the distance uh, any given provider is from the IPNI, but also you can do a standard out from your terminal with the CLI command that shows you kind of the, the running logging of providers, which there's all kinds of interesting insights that you can gather about the current state of providers on the network from this data. So um, I'll drop a link here uh, after the fact that you all can kind of check it out, but it's, it's really cool. Um, and then last but not least, uh, the IPNI team has been iterating on the design decision for uh, a little while regarding the um, what we're calling the IPNI sync. Basically, uh, graph sync advertisements to IPNI uh, are timing out uh, with a high level of frequency. 
across the network. And what this results in is stalled advertisements to IPNI. And there's a lot of this. Um, the storage providers that happen to um, store and then advertise data, um, if they are timing out, then their, their data is not becoming queryable on IPNI. And so uh, our proposal to fix this solution is to take a look at this data transfer protocol and uh, clean it up. We've got a design document that we've just started iterating on with uh, kind of our, our internal team. Uh, probably we can uh, share that with the broader group. Um, I think maybe once folks have had a first pass on it, but um, we'll get that out there. It would create a dependency on the provider in Boost. So we would have to update Boost to get this out to the network. But um, we're in the midst of discussing what that kind of rollout would look like uh, and how we would support both, um, both protocols for the time being as folks update uh, to that new version of Boost. So those are the big updates. Masi, can I kindly ask, um, is there anything else that you wanted to add to these or any color you wanted to add to them? Nope, all good. Thanks, Darvin. Cool. Um, what's what's the trick? What's the trick in supporting more than one protocol? <laughs> Seems like you'd have like you you have you have identify and whatever, so you should be able to just say, do you speak? Do you which protocols do you speak? Let me try the one I prefer. Mm. Um, and so then you have both code paths, and then you deprecate the one you don't like when you feel like you're able to kill it off because enough people have updated. So, oh, that's, that's what we're doing. Okay. What is the sticking point? What was said that no, no, the, uh, question? Yeah, it was just the question about if there were any difficulties. Sounds like they're, they're not, so that's good. Yeah, so we're going to keep the, uh, obviously keep the backward compatibility. Uh, there's some complexities inside the implementation of Stored Index, which is completely low level. Uh, but at the protocol level, like you said, there would be a new uh, protocol identifier for the HTTP sync, uh, which then, you know, we proceed with, uh, you know, supported protocols and whatever, and eventually get to the build one. Awesome. Um, that's the update from the IPNI side. IPFS folks, did one of you want to jump in and catch us up with what's going on in IPFS world? Um, yeah, I, I dropped, uh, like, we spent a bunch of time uh, doing planning, but I dropped uh, two items uh, as useful updates. So one is that we, uh, for maybe like not for Kubo 22, but for Kubo 22, three, uh, we will be aiming at uh, finishing the pull request to expose routing V1, uh, uh, to expose existing routing system in Kubo, which is IPNI and DHT um, as a uh, routing uh, V1 uh, endpoint. And that that's like uh, a way for dog fooding end-to-end -end both client and server implementation that we have in Boxo, in Go, and also uh, dog fooding and identifying any gaps in our specs. Uh, so we have streaming, we have IPNS, but we don't have peer routing. Uh, so there is like an open IP, uh, which I linked, um, which introduces a peer schema. Um, Kuba will most likely only use a subset of that, but uh, they're just flagging that this will be a way for uh, closing functional gap of the routing uh, API. Uh, and that's part of a bigger picture where we want to have uh, ability to do everything IPFS over HTTP. There should be like um, anything you can do today, you should be able to delegate in some way over HTTP. And that way people are able to like black box uh, some parts of the stack uh, and either uh, implement them in different language or delegate to different services. Um, so that's just uh, kind of PSA why that here will be a entry point for a bunch of work. And the second one is I just published a draft of uh, IPNS uh, cleanup. Uh, it's an early draft. Uh, TLDR is that we, we deprecated uh, old signatures, but we still published records which had both of them. 
And even when both client and server only cared about the new signature, the lack of the old signature made the record invalid. So what this IP proposes is that if there's no old signature, um, that's still a valid record because we want to move. Uh, we, we, we ignored the old signatures anyway, and we don't, we, we want to give people ability to remove, uh, we want to give people ability to not store the same values twice. And currently that's what's happening in the record. We stored them once in the protobuf and once in the CBOR. We want to have all it only once. Um, and that's, that's all from my end. Uh, Liddell, do you need anything from IP and ISOIT for the Kubo release? I don't believe so. Uh, I also don't think this IP uh, will kind of like impact uh, any like people who already in integrated IPNS or, or implemented storage because the the wrapper envelope is still protobuf. In that protobuf, we have uh, optional public key for RSA keys. Uh, and we have a signature and the CBOR document. And the signature signs entire CBOR document. So there's like uh, fairly, it, it, the surface is very fairly small. And if uh, people implemented the protobuf uh, envelope before, the only difference will be in validation. And what this IP documents is the change in the way we create records to make them lean and also how to validate things. So lean records are still valid. Uh, uh, what about think... the other IPIP, the peer routing stuff? Uh, so I think the the feedback there would be around uh, peer schema, um, and I think that the rec... so I think like the the takeaway for CAD dot contact would be if you don't know the protocol, right? In the cases when you assumed bit swap before, we would like to uh, ideally return uh, a record in peer schema instead of like unknown. Uh, but that's kind of like a cosmetic thing. I, implementations, uh, at least in Go in JS, will also like support un, un, unknown just to make a smooth transition path. Uh, but for for the spec and for the new implementations, we'll be uh, pointing people in the direction that if you don't know the, the specific protocol or you don't have any protocol specific information, metadata, I just return pure record and with multi others, and that's good enough. Awesome. Thanks for the update, Lubel. Um, Cameron, would you mind kind of catching us up with the state of things on the Bifrost team? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, we are in the process of rolling out uh, 021 at the moment. It seems we, I think we've skipped 020 entirely for some reason. So that's what we're hoping to get out at the moment. So we'll have those um, stats for you guys. Uh, at the moment, it's still isolated to that, that one region that we had the test deployment in, unfortunately. Um, that's about it. Uh, a, a note about the zero. 21 deployment, um, which might be, I think this is true going back. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think this is moving from 0 019 to 21. There is a bug that is now fixed um, around redirects uh, or the, the underscore redirects um, feature. Uh, mm -hmm. Just grabbing the issue. Um, I think you shared something about this in the operators channel, maybe. Is that right? Correct. Just yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah exactly. So that's the same thing. Cool. Um, Thanks for mentioning that. Oh. So just, just FYI, there the patch has been merged into Boxo, and there'll be a an RC for zero twenty two cut. But in the meanwhile, there's a, a workaround. Thanks for bringing that up. I'll make sure to share that we. Uh, that's... So we should probably wait for that. Wait, just brains not switched on properly. Remind me, so should we wait for that to land in the next release, the fix for that? Was that the TLDR of that? Uh, it sounds like there's also a workaround if you want yeah. 21 and not to wait for additional changes. 
Yeah, basically okay. that. Okay, I'll I'll regroup those. So things look at the workaround, see how painful it is. Yeah, not painful. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Cameron. Um, I didn't check today, but I've been uh, checking periodically, and it seems like the um, the stats pages from Bifrost team have been uh, keeping up to date. So it's it's been helpful to be able to check the status of those things. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody else has been referencing them, but uh, I occasionally check just to make sure we can see what's going on. Um, as stuff comes just, up. Just so you guys aren't misled, those stats you're seeing currently are only from that test rollout we had of the um to I think they're in um Las Vegas if I'm remembering the right region. Anyway, it's not important, but it's only a small sample. It's not all of the gateway nodes. That's the main takeaway. So as soon as we get 21 eight, one out, we'll have everything properly. That's good to clarify. All right. Um, so we have a few topics to cover. We don't have a ton, but um, maybe these topics will be lively enough. Um, what, one thing that we wanted to um, kind of check in on is as we were reviewing the uh, IPFS quarterly planning and prioritization is um, there is a PR for the HTTP delegated, um, delegated routing for reader privacy. Um, and I think uh, there's been some discussion on that PR, but uh, there's some work to be done on also the uh, steward side of the house. And uh, I think we were wondering on where this falls in the like a priority list of stewards. Is this going to get worked on uh, this quarter? It's a good question. So uh, for sure, we will circle back to reviewing it. Uh, but when it comes to like if the question is will there be implementation in boxo i'm not sure i didn't thoughts on that yeah i think we're we are still we are still negotiating what the the end results of the prioritization is going to look like but my suspicion is that this isn't going to come up super high unless there's someone specifically pulling for it from us uh in which case you know, I feel like we're we're trying to sort of like amplify our our impact, and so like if if a little bit of us unblocking or helping review or push something along, you know, helps someone out substantially, then we'll probably prioritize that higher. But for the time being, I don't think that the pull on this is super heavy. The the one note um, from Torfin's earlier update that maybe is worth thinking about is since we're not on the IPNI side doing we're not waiting on foundation DB now. So we expect we'll actually have some partners with other full indexers that are working by the end of Q3. So there's the opportunity to not have Kubo tied to just Sid.contact as a hard code, but we, and, and I think the thing blocking is in some sense, this reader privacy that we'd prefer to have reader privacy in place when we turn on third-party content routers as alternative to Sid.contact. That that makes sense. Although the it's um you need both things to get this to work, right? You need you need some level of like decide you need some code that decides which router to use, and then you need the API for figuring it out. Um so I like I I would hope the API is 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 less work than the figuring it out, but uh, I think in but it, but it may actually be be more given how these things tend to go. Um, so that's that's a good point. Uh, I also heard that the uh, reader privacy stuff on DHT is pushed to Q124. Is that right? So an, another rationale for pushing this forward is 
we have reader privacy running on c.contact now, so all the requests are being served from uh, double hash records. Uh, it would be really nice if we can push that value out to Kubo users such that the incoming requests are encrypted to begin with. And then the work that is needed uh, there is the PR that uh, Ivan kindly started 421. And uh, I've had another pass uh, over, so it's, it's ready for review. And then after that, implementation in Boxo and then integration into Kubo. Uh, but the, the side thing that slightly worries me is just having this feature uh, only in IPNI until Q124. Uh, shipping it, you know, because we have it already. And all, all that's missing is like the glue bit in, in Kubo, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think um, I'll say like if it if it comes to it, like we can like we can figure it out, um, right? Because if if what we're looking at is we can either implement this double hashing API where the only consumer of it is IPNI. Um, or we can use like an IPNI specific API. Those things may not be dissimilar enough for anyone to care um, until there's a second thing that wants to use it. Right. So it, it kind of, I could see, I, could, I guess I could see that going either way. Um, right. If we don't feel like we have enough confidence and building and building like a, a somewhat generic API, given we only have one backing implementation. So we don't have confidence to do that yet. Then saying, okay, well, we'll use the specific API for now and then make a generic one once there's a second doesn't seem crazy to me. Um, that's why I guess like that's sort of the, the good thing is like we don't. The API here doesn't need to be the, the blocker, right? If we have multiple, if we have multiple service providers that are providing data and we have some code and some, some logic for determining sanely how to decide which ones to use and sort of the, how synchronized everything is, then that's probably enough to get the ball rolling. Lytle, do you disagree? Sound about right. Yeah, it's uh, uh, honestly I I would have to like think a bit more about the complexities involved. But... That's fair. That's a good takeaway. I know if you're thinking about it, we're we're in good shape. Um, thanks y'all for the perspective on that. I think it gives us something to think about and. Um, Maybe once y'all have had some time to think about it, we can talk a little bit more about where it falls priority-wise, kind of based on uh, renewed understanding. Um, ah, it looks like somebody already answered the question uh, regarding the expiry for bootstrap nodes that came up in a prior meeting. Uh, no expiration at the moment. Um, that was the only other outstanding item we had from previous content routing work groups. So um, I'll take it to the floor and say, does anybody have any top of minds that they would like to cover while we've got the group here or shall we give the time back? All right, world record timing here. Awesome. I hope you all have a great rest of the day. Take care.